you expect the power to flow if you're not plugged in? So with that, we've got plenty of people, we've got plenty of situations that we expect God to intervene with. But look up at the cross. Do you notice at the cross that the background is dark? When Jesus was on the cross, it said in the Bible that darkness fell all over the earth for about three hours. Did you notice that there is darkness that will come before a major breakthrough. There was darkness all over planet Earth when Jesus was on the cross. And then Jesus said, it is finished. And all breakthrough for the entire Earth came through. Salvation was released. So let's all get up on our feet. We're going to pray together for all these different situations, for all these different people. Get up on our feet. Mm -hmm. So Father God, we come before you in Jesus Christ's name. We raise up Ernie, his wife, and all those people that are involved with the death of these people. Father God, we declare in Jesus Christ's name that you would turn this evil situation around and we declare that you would release your angels and turn it around for good for all of those that believe and bring those that do not believe into the family of Christ. Father God, we raise up our sister Lori to you, Father God. We come against and we curse this infection that is in her body. We curse this pneumonia. And we come against it in Jesus Christ's name. It is a name that we can put under our feet. Father God, we raise up our sister Barb to you. We declare that you would mend her body, mend her soul, mend her mind, and mend her emotions. And we declare this all in Jesus Christ's name. And Father God, for all those other people that we have not spoken about, all those people that are people in the audience are thinking about right now, we raise all those people up to you, Father God, and we declare in Jesus Christ's name, you would come to those people's needs, where they currently are, wherever they're at. If they're here on planet Earth, you would come and meet their needs. If they were up in a plane, and even if they're on the moon, that you would come and meet them and take care of their needs. And we declare this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to call all the kids up this morning. And if you think you are a kid, I don't care what age you are, come on up anyways. Um, he did. All right, come on up. Have a seat. Anyone else think there's a kid? That'd be me. Hunter, how old is your dad? 25. Did you guys hear that? Say it louder, Hunter. 25. I've trained him well. I've been 25 for years. I'm still young. All right. Have you guys ever gone to the store? Yeah. Plenty of times. <laughs> Plenty of times. So uh, when you walk up to the store, do you have to push the door open to get in? Sometimes and sometimes not. There's stores that you have to, and stores like uh, Randy's that you just go up and then it slides open. <laughs> so you've got an automatic door. When I was a little kid, We'd go up to the store and there, there was this rubber mat in front of the door. So I'd go up there and 
get to the door and I'd step on the rubber mat, the door would open up, and I'd take my foot off and the door would shut. And I'd go up there and I'd hit it again. The door would open, I'd take my foot off and the door would shut. <laughs> I'm a little kid, so I'd do it a third time, a fourth time, and, and you know, then my parents would finally show up and say, okay, let's go in. You guys uh, experienced that before? No. No? Have you ever gone to the, the restroom and wave your hand underneath the towel dispenser and a, and a towel comes out? Yep. Have you noticed that? Yep. When I was a little kid, we had to pull the towel down. Mm -hmm. They didn't have those automatic ones. And you do this. Yeah, they well, do. yeah, there's still some like that. There are. But I'm going to tell you guys there's something today that the Bible has in it. They talk about the first automatic door in the Bible. So go ahead and have a seat. We're going to talk about the first automatic door that's written in the Bible. And all of you grown-ups that didn't come up, have you, you're probably thinking, Jeff's crazy. The pastor's crazy. There is no automatic door back in the day. I forgot. I remember when we had the, you know, they had to take the stuff, you pulled it down, and it was like cloth, and then they would take it out and wash them, you know, the, like the, oh, yeah. the, those thingies. I just thought of that as they were talking. I'm like, the ones where they had the cloth and then after a while it was all like wet, it was dirty, and then they would take it and... <laughs> you remember those, Pastor Ellen. <laughs> so if you guys got your Bibles, go ahead and turn them to Acts chapter 12. And while you guys are all looking for Acts chapter 12, I'm going to change gears on all of you. Let you guys think a little bit. Does anyone have any praise reports that they want to discuss and share with everybody? Betty, go ahead. I, think, I can't hear. Can you give us a mic? Oh, hold on, Betty. Look. I'm going to come by. With muscle and burning sensation on my right side and my thigh area. Now, side like that. Now, how to spread the brain and hip and uh, good burning and more of uh, muscle spasm for the past year. It's been uh, 99 and 99% better than what I've had in the past year. So it's healed. Praise God for that. See, you're up. All right. This isn't like a praise report or anything. It's just something that came to me when we were doing worship this morning. Um, part of it is inspired from Tom over here with his music. I have one of his CDs and it's got a song on there. I think it's called Oh God, You Must Know a Lot or something like that. Anyway, this is what I got. It just heartfelt that somebody needs to hear. Lord, I have questions. Why do I see and feel lost? God speaks back to you. Because then you can stand strong for others. Most of all, it is part of my plan for you to be as strong in me. Next question would be, why do you let me go through bad things in my life? God answers. I give you free will to choose the good or bad. So believe in me and any bad can be used for good. Great job. Rachel, you something? Yep, we're getting the kids in the day or tomorrow. 
You're getting a new kitten.
And it could have been as simple as, Dear God, get Peter out of prison. Dear God, please protect Peter. Dear God, we don't know what situation is going on, but bless Peter. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. It could be a couple of words. It could be every couple of minutes where you say, Dear God, bless Peter. And in verse 6, the very night before Herod was about to bring him forth, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers fastened with two chains and centuries before the door were guarding the prison. Now picture this. Peter's sleeping. He's chained to these two guards. He's got one chain going to one guard, another chain going to another guard, and they got guards at the door. Do you think Peter was going to go anywhere? He's a really dangerous guy. So dangerous that they had to lock him up because he was preaching the gospel. And suddenly, there you go, suddenly again, an angel of the Lord appeared standing beside him, and a light shone in the place where he was, and the angel gently smote Peter on the side. And it was probably not smote. The angel comes up and goes, Peter, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then Peter was like, what's going on? Saying, get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel tells him, tighten your belt, bind up your sandals. And he did so. Today it would be like, Get dressed, get your shoes on, grab your coat. And Peter did what he was instructed. And before Peter could even say something about, hey, what about these chains? They were off. And he said to him, wrap your outer garment around you and follow me. Just seconds earlier, Peter was chained to two soldiers. And now he's got an angel there telling him, get your stuff, let's go. And Peter went out along following him, and he was not conscious of what was apparently being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. So Peter thought he was still dreaming. And when they passed through the first guard and the second, they came to the iron gate, which leads into the city. So let's back up. Peter's walking with this angel, and he walks past the first guard, and the first guard doesn't see him at all. Walks right by. And Peter's probably looking, and the guard's just probably sitting there. Wide awake not paying any attention. So then Peter keeps on walking, and he's walking, and he comes to the second guard, and walks right past him, and he didn't see anything either. Now isn't that amazing? Being chained to two guys, they're probably sound asleep, and walks past two more guards that are probably on duty, awake, and nobody sees them. <coughs> so Peter thinks he's dreaming. So now they come to the iron gate which leads into the city. Now listen up, kids. Of its own accord, the gate swung open. 
the first ever automatic gate. And they went out and passed through one street and once and at once the angel left him. So let's get back to this automatic gate. I believe that this gate was locked. There was probably a big chain on it and a lock that prevented people from opening the gate. They were inside a prison. Do you think prison doors have locks on them? And they're usually locked, right? Yep. So Peter and the angel are walking towards this gate, and before Peter could even say anything, the gate swings open, and the angel and Peter walk out the gate. And as soon as they got through it, the gate probably shut right behind them. The first ever automatic door and the world has ever seen, and it's written right here in the Bible for all of us to read about. But it gets even better. Because once they get out, the angel disappears. And in verse 12, when he, at a glance, became aware of this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. So basically, Peter goes over to Mark's mother's house, where a large number of them were assembled together and were praying. So Mark's mom had a whole house full of people praying for Peter. And then Peter knocks at the gate of the porch, and a maid named Rhonda came to answer. Rhonda is now remembered for all eternity. Her name is right here in the Bible. And she recognizes Peter's voice, and in her joy, she forgets to open the door and let him in. She runs back into the house and tells the people there that Peter is standing at the porch, at the gate. And they all look at her and tell her she's crazy. How many times have we seen a miracle happen in front of us or someone tells us about a miracle and we all go, well, that can't be true. Why are we in denial? But meanwhile, Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the gate, they saw him and were amazed. Peter's pounding on the gate. Let me in. So somebody finally had to leave the house, go out to the gate, open the door, and go, it's really Peter. But Peter motioned to them and with his hand to keep quiet and listen. And he relayed to them how the Lord had delivered him out of the prison. And he said, report this to James the less and to the brethren that he, and then Peter left and went to some other place. But it gets even better. Now it's daytime, and there was no small disturbance among the soldiers over what had happened to Peter. Can you imagine being the guards that were sleeping, that were chained to Peter? They woke up, and there's no Peter. There's no Peter at the end of this chain. They weren't too happy about that. And in verse 19 it says, And when Herod had looked for him and could not find him, he placed the guards on trial and commanded that they should be led away to be executed. 
Back at that day, if you lost a prisoner that was in your custody, you were executed. You did not want to lose a prisoner. But God stepped in. Herod's plan was to be right after the Passover to execute Peter because the Jews at the time thought it was a good thing to execute believers. When Jesus was here on earth, he told Peter that at some point in time he was going to be old and that people were going to lead him to places where he didn't want to go. Peter wasn't old yet. Or at least Peter didn't think he was old yet. And he was in prison. But this wasn't what Jesus had told him. Jesus told him to get out of a boat and walk on the water. And he did it. There were probably other things that Jesus said that told Peter to do and Peter did it. Peter knew the authority that Jesus had and if Jesus said something, he knew he could take it to the bank. He knew if Jesus said something, that it was going to happen. And Peter probably was in prison and was not probably concerned about getting killed. Because he knew that Jesus had told him that he was going to be old. But, you know, there's nothing in here that said that Peter was concerned about anything. The only thing that was mentioned that he thought he was dreaming, maybe, or that he was seeing a vision. But as soon as that angel disappeared in front of him and he was outside the prison and looked around and realized, Oh, this is real. And goes over to a friend's house and knocks on the door. And they're so excited to hear that he's out that they forget to let him in. <laughs> is Jesus knocking on our hearts? Is he trying to tell us something? Is he trying to show up in your life? And we're so excited that we forget to let Jesus in. Automatic doors. First one ever recorded. And today, we think they're just normal. But back then, it was something to see. Father God, we come before you in Jesus Christ's name. We thank and praise you for this word of knowledge. Father God, if you were able to take Peter out of a dangerous situation and bring him to safety, Father God, we know that you could do the same for us at any time, at any place, by any means. Even if you have to bring an angel down to us and show us to protect us. So Father God, we declare in Jesus Christ's name that you would do the same for us as you did for Peter. Help us to realize this. Help us to 
Learn to open the door when you come knocking. And we declare this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. One last final note. The Monster Hall blessing. This is an opportunity for us to witness to people that would never want to ever come into a church. Amen. Just think of when Jesus came and prayed for people and people got healed. Just one person, one person got healed and they went home and people could see that people were healed. What happened the next time when Jesus came and spoke to people? There were probably at least 10 people that showed up that needed healing. And after those 10 got healed, the next time Jesus showed up, there were 100 people that needed healing that showed up next. And after that, it was 10,000 people that showed up that needed healing. Every one of those healed people witnessed to somebody, whether they said it or not. I expect God to show up You know, God will show up, heal somebody from whatever. It could be anything. It could be something physical. It could be something mental. And they're going to show up the next day with somebody else that needs a healing. Because they're going to go home and they're going to tell somebody that they went to this concert and they let somebody pray over them. <clears throat> and now whatever problem they had is gone. Amen. So when you hear the Holy Spirit telling you to pray for the monster blessing, the monster hall blessing, Take five seconds and say, God, release your angels to go heal these people. Release your angels to have them have an encounter of some sort. It could be every hour that you could just say, God, release your power over this monster hall blessing. Send your angels to to do something miraculous, to show a bunch of unbelievers that there is a God. So just keep in mind with that the next couple of days, this week, this coming weekend, as it will be exciting to hear what happens when we come back on Sunday for, for the things that we do find out about. How many other things are going to happen that we don't know anything about? And we just expect God to show up and have an impact on these people. So Father God, we come before you all in Jesus Christ's name and we declare a blessing to be over this monster hall blessing. Father God, we declare that you would send your angels forth to bring these people in, to prepare these people's hearts. Father God, we declare that you would release your healing power, to release your power to draw these people in. And we bind Satan and his demons from trying to steal any of these blessings that we will be releasing. And we declare this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So Pastor Allen, do you have anything to say? Because I'm giving you the microphone.
She said, no, I have something to say. In the, in the text that the pastor brought, there were no limit to the chains that were broken. That's right. Amen. Equate that to Monster Hall. There's no limit to the chains that those people are bound with, yes. that God will set them free. Yes. And then because they were set free, the word was spread. Good, good work. Good work. Uh, God gave it to me this morning. <laughs> good work. Keep, keep going. Come on. You got to pray for some people here. But that's, uh, yeah, that's, there was, there, there was no limit to the chains. He broke them off, opened the gates, and then he executed those people that tried to hold them back. Well, if you go into Acts right after that, God takes care of Herod. Oh, man. Where was they? So if anybody needs prayer, 